Well, how do there, chums? You guys, in the viewerverse, I've got a No Man's Sky video for you today, but today I'm not going to be doing the editing like I normally do. This is just going to be raw footage straight through OBS. And yeah, I'm going to be putting it out there and seeing how this goes. Might save me some time in editing, but I just want to see what the experience is like for you guys in the viewerverse. Let's hit on up the PlayStation 5 game. And we're jumping straight in there, people. And this is my exotic ship. Now, as much as I like this exotic ship, I'm more partial to the smaller guppy. So if it was just this bottom section here, I'd be a lot happier. And I also just want the twin engines. I don't want this sort of long dorsal finny type weirdness sticking off the back. Well, dorsal fin's that one. I don't know what you would even call this one at the back. It looks like some sort of grip, doesn't it? It looks like some sort of dodgy sander at the moment. So yes, I'm not overly keen on this one. Now, I did put a little bit of a challenge out there to Ricey to try and find me one inside of the 905. Right, he hasn't found one inside the 905, but one of his Discord members has found one exactly to the specifications of what I'm looking for. Not in the 905 though, it's inside of sort of like the galactic centre of Euclid. So we're going to be jumping over and taking a look at that. I need to get to my portal base, so while I'm getting over to the portal base, I'll bring up on the screen the actual message itself and show you and give credit where credit's due. So let's uh, Come back over to that mode for a second. Uh, yes, he hit me up on the old WhatsApp. Yeah, I met Ricey in real life, so we, we talked to each other a fair bit online. So yeah, here's the actual ship itself. And there's the portal code in the bottom there. It might be reversed for you guys and a little bit blurry, but trust me, I can see it okay on my screen. That's all cool. So who was this? It was Debs Eastwood. So thank you very much, Debs Eastwood, for sending that over to Ricey and for Ricey Starship Emporium for sending it over to me. Thank you very much, people. Thank you. So I've just arrived, located at my blue portal planet, and uh, yeah, it's no longer a blue planet. It's kind of gone purple. For all the different updates, planets sometimes change their colour and alteration. It didn't have shrimps all over it for a start off, or the creatures that it frequents now. Heck no. I've got one planet that I called Massive Diplo Planet and they've all turned into Triceratopses. I even built a base in the shape of a Diplo. Oh, for fudge's sake. Right, well, whenever I get this now, whenever I've got to reactivate a portal, I just I just change my difficulty setting. <laughs> just put it into creative for a bit. Yeah, because it's a lot blinking quicker. Even if you've got all the resources, doing this is freaking tedious because you have to drag it and drop it and drag it and drop it. Where if you put it in creative, you just clickety-click, clickety-click, done real quick. Heck yes, clickety-click, done real quick. There's an advert there, people. I can hear it in the makings. Brilliant, awesome. So there we go. Activate to Mondo. Chicka chicka boom boom. Chicka chicka pow pow. Activate portal. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> I'm just going to put my phone away. I need the bloody portal code, don't I? What a freaking wombat. Okay, here we go. Right. Let's look that on that stand. Right, so it's a double birdie man bird bird. Boom boom. A whirly man twirly black hole. A waypoint. A triple sun. No, quadruple sunset. One, two, three, and four. Freaking nice. Got us also a waypoint. A double Triforce, yes, and then a Sunset. You could probably commit that one to frickin' memory, couldn't you? Frickin' awesome. Lovely jubbly people, there we are. That's all implicated. Now, this is an exotic ship. Now, although I said that I might not do any editing, it's not a first spawn, it's not a first waiver. So I might be waiting around for frickin' eons for this thing to fly in. And it's probably best to do this at a trading post, isn't it, of all places, I would imagine. I don't know whether I've got an economy scanner installed inside of this exotic ship at the moment. Now, I do have to unpackage all of my technologies. There you go, I'll make myself a little bit bigger while it's just freaking warping, because that's not all that interesting, is it? Yeah, so I need to unpackage all the technologies in my current exotic ship. And when we do finally get the other exotic ship, put them all back in again and install locate them. Let me just show you on screen here what my exotic ship looks like right now, people. Okay, the exotic ship, where are you? There it is, there it is. The Hijon Affinity. Now, if I just show you my technology area, I have got pretty much every single technology in there, including the economy scanner and conflict scanner. So it's pretty darn freaking good. I mean, look at the freaking stats on this. But I'm going to have to take all of this stuff out. But we can do that at the trading post, can't we? While we're waiting for the exotic to fly in. Let's go do that then. Let's take on off and let's fly on over to a trading post, people in the view of us. Sweet! We take to the freaking skies! I guess we do. Nice. And I'm popping over to here and I'm going over to there. Boom! Search for trading post. Let's uh, fly up into space a little. Boom! Up through the atmosphere, up where the air is clear and up where there's less friction. So I can fly a little bit quicker and get to my destination. 
Oh God! You could probably put that into song, can you? Up round the hour is clear. Oh, it's already a song. It's from Mary Freaking Poppins, isn't it? <laughs> oh, freaking heck. Okay, well, let's fly on over this way and let's fly on down to the trading post. This is quite a wondrous planet, actually, isn't it? I'm loving the purples and the hues that we've got here. Not such a bad planet to be doing this on, to be honest. Now, a lot of people say don't build a base at a trading post because it can upset the spawns. And I totally agree. If you put down some land in a pads, at, an, uh, at a, uh, a trading post, sometimes it can upset the spawns and the landing rate of ships. You are to build a base here. I always find that just not putting down landing pads helps. I'm just going to move this one off of a landing pad, so at least we can get the full quota of ships land. It shouldn't matter overly too much. I've also got the teleporter in there, so I should be able to teleport all my tech out. Now, I like standing on the roof of these places. Now, luckily, I don't think this planet has storms, does it? Let's have a quick look. Weather, boiling monsoons. Oh, I tell a lie, it might. <laughs> it might have the odd storm, people. Now, normally, what I would do is turn the volume right up, mainly so I can hear when an exotic ship flies in. I can't really have that luxury, so I'm going to pick it up on mic. What I can do, though, is stick on a headset. I'm going to look like a freaking pilot, though. Now I can hear when an exotic ship flies in. Nice. Awesome. So I'm just going to keep my ear holes open for when a, an exotic ship flies in. And while I'm waiting for that to happen, I'm just going to unpackage all of this tech. I need to put it into my exosuit, which is going to be a right bloody pain, isn't it? What about my freighter? I've got a lot of space in my freighter. I haven't got a great deal of space in my freighter, really. I wish there was an auto sort button. There we go. We'll just stick it there then. Right, this is going to take a freaking lifetime doing it this way, isn't it? Okay. Mm, yeah, and that scrolly, man, scrolly stuff is a pain in the blinking neck. And I've noticed that even if you go and set it to tabbed mode, like if I do this, if I do that, as soon as I go across the screen, it doesn't keep its structure. It doesn't stay in that tabbed format. So you're forever changing it. I wish it would just set as a default of how you wanted it. And here we go. Let's just stick all this in. This is just going to take me a month of Sundays. But then again, we are waiting for that exotic ship to fly in. I do like watching the sky, though, to see when an exotic ship flies in. I'm getting slightly quicker with this, but um, it's, it's not fast by any stretch of the imagination, is it? Dun -dun 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 -dun. Put that there. I can't transfer that one. I can with this one, though. Lovely. Okay, and then that, probably not the best sort of time to have chosen to do this format of video. I mean, technically, I am saving this video clip to my hard drive on my PC. I could speed this bit up. And you know what? It's the joy of no man's sky, isn't it? And if you're a new player, maybe this is benefiting you somehow. I don't know. But yeah, we'll just stick these in here. It just it it just shows that even the you know the legacy players and veterans of No Man's Sky, we still have this tedium to deal with. It'd be nice if there was a button to uninstall and package all tech from a ship. Because you know people often trade their ships. It'd be quite cool to do that. And again, it'd have to have a confirm wheel or something, just in case you hit the button by accident, because that'd be really freaking annoying. Yeah, because I don't think they really put undo buttons in No Man's Sky, do they? It's like with base building. It'd be nice to have a ba an undo button in base building. The amount of times that I fluff up with a part, and then you're like, oh, no. And you'd go to delete it, and it doesn't just delete that one part. It deletes associated parts. And you're like, oh, for fudge's sake. You sort of like lose the will to live sometimes, don't you? Let's have to put this over here. Boom. Ah, shit. Yep. I can't install that one. Let's put this one in there. Okay. And is that all the tech out? No! There's a freaking another load! Because, yes, yeah, the tabbed mode. Yes, yeah, so I gave right. Brilliant. Oh, for fudge. Can't do that one. That's one I can. Lovely. We haven't had the exotic fly in right now. Now, a lot of people out there do reload methods, don't they? And, and that kind of works well for getting ships to spawn in that little bit quicker, which we'll look at doing in a moment. Um, let me just get all this tech out first, though. Yeah, this is this is a, this is a joy, isn't it? Yeah, here we are. Uh, it sort of puts you off of wanting to trade ships in, put it that way. Yeah, it'd be nice to get more options around ship scrapping, ship hunting. It'd be nice if there was, like, I don't know, some sort of shipyard that you could take ships to. 
and have them scrapped there and they actually get appraised before they get scrapped or something. I know we've got that ship outfitters tool, but it'd be nice just to have an NPC, some sort of interaction with the NPC that says, are you sure you want to scrap this ship? It's bloody awesome. I tell you what, rather than scrap it, I'd, I'd, I'd give you a load of freaking nanites or units or even quicksilver. That'd be quite a nice little option. Same with multi-tools at the moment, because all you've got is the option to sort of swap multi-tools. It'd be nice to be able to take those to some sort of weapons expert, even the terminal at your own base, and get them appraised by the weapons technician, wouldn't it? That'd be pretty cool. It's the same with the exo... well, not the exo... but yeah, it'd be nice to have another terminal maybe for bases for a ship technician, wouldn't it? You know, that'd be pretty cool if you could tweak things or even upgrade some of your your uh, modules. It's like that one's a B-class. It'd be cool if you could pump some nanites into it and just turn it into an S or something at your shipyard or something. I don't know. There's, way, there's, so much, there's so much potential in No Man's Sky and there's so many ideas that I have while playing it that I don't even put into video because you, you're kind of thinking about it on the fly and the next day you've got a different idea. And it must be the same in the Hello Game studio. They must sit around a freaking desk or something, throwing ideas at one another, saying, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? And they'd be like, no, that, that wouldn't work because of X, Y and Z. Or oh, that might upset certain crowd X, B and A or whatever, you know. It must be quite difficult now because they've put so much into game. To put something in without it stepping on the toes of something else or um, a part of the community must be really tricky for Hello Games. I'm wondering whether it's going to get to the point where they say, you know what, let's we've got so much that we want to put in. Why don't we just um, you know, do a reset and uh, put in all this stuff? Why can't I? Why can't I package this one? Won't let me package that one. Isn't that weird? Um, that's strange. It should do. All right, well, we're going to be one Positron ejector down then, I guess. Mm, that's that's really weird. Okay. It just gives me move technology, no package technology, no nothing. All right. All right, fine. Well, you know, we've, we've got quite a lot going on there, to be fair. All right, where's my ship? Well, did you go jump in it and jump out of it? And we'll do a reload. And we'll see if that encourages the exotic to fly in people in the view of us. Oh great, right when a storm's about to fly in. Okay, boiling monsoon is about to monsoon us. Okay. Hello. Alright, cool. There we go then. Let's uh, do a reload. Boom. So there we go, that's how you unpackage all your technologies. Now, so this is the second part of the video. Ship hunting! And it's just waiting for the exotic to fly in. I'm probably only going to do this one reload, to be honest. And then we'll just stand around and wait for the ship to come in. Now, this is where I might do some editing, in all fairness, people. Because, you know, we could be sitting here watching paint dry for the next, like, half an hour to an hour. Maybe even longer. You know, it's not a given. There's no sort of guarantee that a ship's going to even emerge, you know? So, yeah, let's fly on up. I'm just going to stay under shelter for a moment, people in the view of us. Hello. Oh, I'm still in creative mode, aren't I? You know what, that's probably not a bad thing, to be honest, since there's a storm raging. It means I can just stand out in the storm, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'll just turn it back into normal mode once we get the blinking ship people in the view of us. Why the fudge not? At least I don't have to really pay for it either. <laughs> okay, well, we've got a load of lightning. We've got some pretty ugly looking haulers there. And we've got a explorer that isn't symmetrical. We've got another hauler that's Looks like Optimus Prime without his Prime. We've got ourselves a nice little shuttle there. That is quite a nice little configuration for a shuttle. And that one, that one's quite tidy and tiny, isn't it? That's quite cute. Wings. Okay, what's that one called? The Examiner. Okay, fine. And uh, nothing great there. Now, a lot of people would just do a reload here. So it spawns in the ships that little bit quicker. What I might do is wait until after the storm, go and create another save. Because if I don't, every time I reload, it's just going to be a freaking storm. Which isn't going to be the greatest of viewing pleasure for you guys inside of the viewerverse, is it? So we'll wait until this storm goes. We might see another wave of ships flying. And let's just hope that the exotic flies in, shall we, people? Now, I have heard that in the PC community, there is mods that actually ups the spawn rate of all the rarer ships within inside of a system. Which is really cool. I really wish there was some sort of override that we could input in one of these platforms down here. You see, like over there, you've got a platform. Oh, let's go interact with it. Because at the moment, you can actually... You used to be able to use override chits to bring your own ship here. Now it uses navigational data. Oh, uh, whoops. I've just gone and called my blinking ship in. Accident. Okay, I better move that. 
balls. I just wasted the navigational data. But it would be nice if there was an override chit to only bring in A class and S class ships for a certain duration, wouldn't it? That'd be quite nice. You know, maybe the same sort of duration that you have for raiding a Sentinel pillar and disabling the Sentinel activity. That sort of duration, maybe, you know, four to five hours or something like that. that that'd be quite nice. Oh, look at that side rail fighter. That's pretty darn nice, isn't it? I'm fairly sure there's going to be somebody out there in the view of us that likes that. Very cool. We've got another shuttle. Not the nicest of configurations, to be fair. Another one of the Optimus Primes. Oh, we've got another side rail fighter there. Cool. What well, have we got circling us right now? Are you the exotic ship? It's hard to say. No. No, you're not. You're a shuttle. You're nowhere even close, mate. Don't even pretend. Cool, yeah. Well, you know what? What I might do is I, I might stop the footage at this point and then I'll reconvene with you guys in the view of Earth when the exotic ship flies in, shall I? Yeah, why not? Let's do that. Well, welcome back there, chums. Now, I did say I'd let you know when the exotic flies in, but there is quite a nice explorer in this system, people. So let's just go into camera mode, stick the sun in the sky so we can see the colours of this thing. Yeah, it's quite a dark-looking sort of explorer. Black and blue. Very cool. So I thought I'd just share that with you guys in the viewerverse. There's that um, lovely side rail fighter in red and white, which is kind of my logo colours, which is quite nice. I do like the cockpits when you're inside of these, but I just don't like the look of them when you're outside of them. But it is quite a nice configuration, that. There's also another little sort of shuttle over here that's got these little side sort of fans. But look, this one sticks out that far. Well, this one's sort of stuffed into its housing. It looks a bit janky. It looks a bit broken. Is it a bug? Is it a feature? You tell me. <laughs> yeah, anyways, I'm just waiting for it to fly in. But look at this planet in the daytime. It's a beautiful place. It really is. Heck yes. But yeah, I'm kind of enjoying my time here anyway, just watching the sort of you know, the day and night cycle. Pretty darn awesome. Yeah, I'm not doing any reloads because I'm just sort of watching the planet majestically sort of change. And there, there is some interesting fauna on here. It's like that little guy over there. Look, his little bipedal chap. And we've got some flying airworms as well. Isn't that cool? Well, chums, I think I may have seen almost every single ship spawn, apart from the exotic. I mean, look at this thing. That's pretty darn freaking ugly. But you think that's a bit ugly? Check this out over here. We've got two explorers, and they look like they've got those Samsung 360 eye camera things just sort of stapled to them. This one's got two of them. Well, this one's got two, but one's higher than the other. Yeah, so that looks a bit freaking janky. But there we go. So, yeah, I just thought I'd share those with you just in case there's something out there that appeals to someone. But look at that medley of ships. That really isn't a decent medley, is it? No, that's freaking terrible. Well, people, there is an odd ship that appears inside of this system. There seems to be a solar ship. Look at that. Solar ship. You had a believe it. Okay, that's, a, that's unusual. And it's my logo colours. That's pretty darn freaking snazzy, isn't it? Now I've been standing here for about 40 minutes and this is the first one that I've seen fly in. I hope that hasn't replaced the exotic ship inside of this system because right now I've seen no signs of the exotic ship and I've been here, like I say, for some freaking time, people in the view of us. Well, they're chums. I've been here for some time, as you know, and I thought I'd seen every single spawn of ship and then these flew in. Two sort of vipers with side rails at the same time. And look, there's another one. There's freaking three of them. I haven't seen any of these since I've been here. And now, three fly in at once. That gives me a little bit more hope that maybe the exotic might be there. And maybe we're nearing the end of the spawning pool. But we can only but hope and wait and see. So, people in the view of us, I got a little bit bored of waiting for the ship to fly in. So I named the creatures I could see. We've got Piggy Six Legs, because he, he, he drinks blood as well, this guy apparently, and it looks like his feet are covered in the stuff. But yeah, Piggy Six Legs. We've also got Feathered Stevie. He's well insulated. I guess he is. Pretty darn nice. And we've got a Horned Stevie. Look at him. He's always watching. Well, he was. He was on that cliff edge over there, wasn't he, earlier? I got bored. I used him for target practice. I'll show you his freaking carcass in a moment. And then we've got a One-Eyed Stevie. Yeah, One-Eyed Monster Stevie. Grows wings before death. That I would like to see. Okay, right, cool. And, uh, yeah, so where is that carcass of the little guy? There he is down there, look. There he is. That's him. 
Yep, yeah, adult Stevie, nomadic. Diet, small trees. Not anymore! Let's see if we can make him bounce. Kaboom. No. Boom! Oh, he moved. Yeah, he bounced a little there. All oh, the joys to be had. Okay, right. And, um, yeah, so we're still watching ships fly in at the moment, people. In between murdering Stevies. Yeah, but there we go. Um, such is my life. Okay, I'm, I'm going slightly insane. I've been here well over two hours now, people. This is, um, like watching paint dry. Oh, great. Oh, look, there's another solar ship flying in. What have we got there? We've got an explorer. What was that one that sort of just went really fast? Oh, it's a, it's a fighter. Okay, nice. All right. Well, well there we go, people. Um, I'll be with you, I hope, shortly. But um, I thought it would be shortly. A lot longer ago in time. Yeah. Okay, chums. I've spotted another Stevie over on yonder hill. There he is. Pawn Stevie. Let's see if we can get him with this cannon from here. Oh, we did. We can got him. Boom. Got him again. Oh, he's running for cover. No, you don't, Stevie. Boom. Oh, yes, you do. Managed to get behind cover. Oh. Oh, he's dodged that. Boom. Is he going to live? He's got over the other side of the mountain, people. Budge. He escaped. Oh, he's coming back for more. Boom. Oh. Oh, he's ducked over the mountain edge. Come on. Oh, there he goes. He's over by his boulder now. Come on, emerge at the other side. There he is. Boom. Did we get him? No, we missed him. Oh, 46. We don't know whether we got him or not. We would have got a sort of Mordite pop up if we got him. But he escaped. He escaped the wrath of the Steve. Yeah, well, the wrath is just. There's not much else to do, is there? I'm watching the freaking day change. Right, he's. he's not making his way back either. I think he's had enough. Oh, um, any others? Any others? Oh, there's one there. Nope, he's on the other side of the cliff. Dang it! Oh well, well we've got one that we managed to butcher. Okay, cool, yeah, well there you are people. Um, yeah, back to watching ships land, I guess. Okay, Jams, I'm wondering whether the spawn rate might be different inside of creative mode. So I'm just gonna put this back into normal. And we'll see if that has any sort of change and bearing on the spawn of ships. So here we go, let's go and jump inside of the exotic ship that I've got here that I want to trade. Jump in and out, make a save, and we'll do a reload. We'll see if that does anything at all. So here we go, let's jump out. Let's do a reload. Boom. And this is now in normal mode. So I have to be a bit more careful with what I'm doing. You know, take shelter when I need to. But I reconvene if I see this exotic ship. What I might go and do is just check the station. and Make sure it's not a first waiver at the station. <laughs> I haven't thought of doing that. So I'm putting down a beacon and hitting up a save here. And we're just going to fly on up to the station. And I should be able to make my way back to this beacon. If it's not a first wave spawn inside of the station. And then we'll come back down and we'll try our luck back down here. <laughs> didn't think to try the station. What a freaking dumpty. I mean, it probably isn't, but if it is, then that's freaking awesome. right oh, so station, here we come. Where are you, Mr. Station? Is that orange sort of diamond on the radar? There we go. Let's head on over. And hyperfrost. Boom! Right, well, I've landed inside of the station. Now all I've got to do is just jump out of my ship to create a save. There we go. Boom. And that's all saved. Now if I do a reload, there we go. Hopefully we'll see what ships fly in. Um, I won't alter this footage. We'll see if it flies in in the first two waves. And if not, then we know that it's definitely not a first waver. Actually, we'll wait for the first three waves. Give it a decent enough chance. We'll see if it flies on in. Let's have a look what multi-tools in the cabinet while we wait for the first wave, shall we, people? In the view of us, we have a look what we've got over here. It's a large rifle. Very cool. I do like rifles. I like the ones that have got the hilt on the back, though, more so. It's a B-class. Not too bad. Not too great, though. Okay, all right, fine. I mean, we could check on all the modules as well, but I'm a little bit nervous that ships might start flying in. Uh, yeah, I could put my headset on so I can hear, but let's go talk to this little chap. Hello, mate. Oh, for fudge's sake. Okay, it's interacted with that. You know what, let's not bother looking at the blinking one. 
Let's just go and wait for the ships to fly on in. I like standing over by this sort of giant, well, the station override, or the station core. I mean, it's not the override. We've got the overrides, but they don't do anything, do they? Right, anyway, let's just watch the doors. What's on the doors? George doors. Um, nothing. Nothing is flying in. Now, this system itself is a booming system, which if you are on a hunt for, uh, you know, decent sorts of ships like these exotics a booming um, free star exotic sort of um, economies is what you're looking for free star economies so that's like booming or affluent and so forth and so on but they're your best bets for finding ships people of this sort of elk however i have noticed that stations are a little bit broken um ships just don't seem to fly in all that often or um, i don't know whether that's because freighters spawn outside and they fly on the freighters instead who freaking knows? Is it a bug? Is it a feature? No one really knows. And when they do fly in, they seem to fly in through the roof rather than through the entrance. I see, part of me thinks that they're going to be overhauling the station at some point. Mainly because when you look at this, it says flight path sort of overseer. And you can see that there's a far more landing strips or lines than there are landing paths. I've been saying this for a while. Oh, here we go. Ships are now flying in. And we've got two. Look, that one just flew in through the freaking ceiling. Did you see that? Yeah. And that one flew in through the ceiling, not through the entrance. Seems a little bit finicky at the moment, people. And also, I've noticed that since they've updone all of these sort of um, explorers and some of the haulers, their sort of body parts of the ships, the fuselages, sort of cut through the gantries and stop you from walking everywhere. Uh, I do think that the stations are on par for some sort of update or overhaul because at the moment they seem a little bit small. Yeah, but anyway, there you go, that's a little mini theory. That was the first wave and we didn't see the exotic fly in, so it's definitely not a first wafer by any stretch of the imagination, is it? No. Now, if we wait for these to take on off and fly on out, we wait for the second wave to fly on in. You know what? I can do that, and if I see the actual exotic fly in, I'll let you know. Otherwise, I'll be reconvening with you back down at the trading post. Well, chums, I'm back down now at the actual trading post, and I have seen quite a lot of the solar ship variant fly in now, where before it took me probably about 40 minutes or so before I saw my first solar ship, I've seen three in the time that I've been here so far, people. I don't know whether it's changed the spawn rate or what, or whether it's just completely random numbers and complete random luck. And I don't know whether this exotic ship still exists inside this system, or how long ago that screenshot was taken from Debs. Yeah. Well, something weird just happened. The trading post has come under attack by freaking pirates, people in the view of us. So, yeah, that's, that's a thing now. That happens. Okay, fine. But what I might do is I've got my little save beacon down here anyway. Go hit that up. Boom. Let's just try doing a reload and see if that gets rid of the bloody pirate, shall we? Come on, there might be a bonus to it. So you can see there, it's now 6 of the PMs here in the UK. Still no blinking exotic ship. Dang it. Well, I'm back after the reload and yes, that seems to have got rid of those pesky pirates. I was just watching the ship circle around, hoping to see an exotic flying in. That'd be freaking excellent, but no such blinking luck. Heck no. Starting to wonder whether this exotic is a thing now, people. Yeah, it's just as rare as rocking horse turds, I guess. I've looked at the coordinate exchange to see if we can find a first waiver, but a lot of them were posted months and months ago, so there's a good chance that they're no longer a first spawn. Chums, chums, chums! Look, 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 look! It's flying in! It's freaking here! Awesome! Oh, oh, oh. oh, it does exist. It's still here. Come on, pilot. Where are you? There you are. Hello there, code entity. Freaking heck. Oh, that took blinking ages, didn't it? But here we go. Yes, and we want to make an offer on the lifeform ship. There it is in all of its glory. Fantastic Mondo. Isn't it cute? Isn't it awesome? Yes, we're going to negotiate the price. And yes, we're going to be exchanging. Heck yes. Thank you very much. This is now mine. I'm going to be jumping in and out of this as quickly as I possibly can. Just to sort of make a save. Heck yes. Brilliant, eh? Lovely. So it looks like chucking it back into normal mode from creative was a good blinking shout. But now I'm going to be putting it back to creative mode. We're going to fly on up to the actual station. And I'm going to fully augment the shite out of this thing. Because I'd already managed to do all the work on the previous one. Well, I used all my ship augmentation. I don't have any left now. 
But luckily, the Waypoint update has brought us this sort of mini sort of shenanigans to cut a few corners when it comes to the old grind, so don't mind if I do. Let's head on over to the old Stacion, and I'll be doing the sort of upgrades on this ship right away. <laughs> We've got it, people in the viewerverse. How cool is that? Yeah, let's uh, just get a little photo. Ah, oh, there we are. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Isn't it lovely? It's freaking wondrous. I like it. I like it a lot. Let's fly on in then, and let's get this fully augmented. Heck yes. Okay, so heading up the ramps and heading over to the ship outfit and Stacey on it. Here we go. Ship outfitting. Lovely jubbly. Now oh, it sounds like my steps are home. Just a freaking IV jump. Here we go then. Okay, upgrade Starship. Here we go. And apply augmentation. Don't mind if I do. Here we go. Let's just go to town on this little guy. Bum 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 bum. And I've got to go and install all the freaking tech. This is going to take me a long time to get this sorted out, people. There you go. I'll be putting it back into normal mode as soon as I've clicked on all of this and managed to upgrade all of its inventory space. And it doesn't look like it's done all the general space. Yeah, let's just go back and let's just double check that it is definitely fully upgraded. Upgrade, apply augmentation down here. Yes, it says it's reached its max slottage. All right, fine. That seems a bit weird, seems a bit janky. Look at that, I can't scroll up. What's that all about? All right, fine, that's done. Right, so now to install all of the tech. This could take me some time, people. So here we go, let's install that. And uh, right, oh, um, what am I gonna be boosting on this ship? Well, exotics are quite good with their hyperdrive normally, but this one not so much. I'll we'll stick that there. Anyway, I'll get to work on this. And I'll reconvene with you once I've got it fully tooled up, people. In the first. Right, well, how do that? People will reconvene and I've fully upgraded my ship. So let's have a look at the old technology there. I think I can get one more S class positron ejector in there. But yeah, we'll come across that when we come across it. But yeah, the damage potential is pretty good. But the hyperdrive range is freaking through the roof because I used the three boosted slots there. And the other boosted slot I used on my launch thrusters. So hopefully I can use this one more of an exploring ship for landing on planets, taking off again, landing, taking off, etc etc and also jump in large swathes of distance so yeah it's more of an exploring ship rather than a fighting ship and that's kind of like echoed in the top two there the shield strength and the damage potential but it is an explorer so there we go people i think i'm pretty happy with that yeah happy as a larry right well let's go and jump inside of the ship go and make a save and then i'm going to be ending off people so yeah, I hope you've liked this sort of style of video. Let me know inside of the actual comments whether you've enjoyed this. Because yes, it's a different style of editing. I didn't do this on my PlayStation, so it hasn't got the gnarly comic book transitions. But hopefully you like the transitions I've added in. Because I've done this one in Power Direct. So yes, first time sort of editing on your PC, really. Anyway, people in the viewerverse, hope you enjoyed this and take care. And thank you very much for watching. Cheerio, bye.